Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for joining me for my weekly guitar blog. It's January 25th, 2015, and this week we're going to be covering arpeggios with extensions. And uh, this week's question was sent in from Keith. He's out in Rochester, New York, and he wrote in with this email. Could you consider making a lesson covering extended arpeggios, the 9th, 11th, and 13th? I'm unclear of whether or not it's actually worth it to make up an arpeggio into its own neck pattern so that it has extended tones. And if I were to start doing this, I don't know how I would really go about doing it. Some general information on this topic would be interesting to hear from you, Andrew. Thanks from Keith in Rochester, New York, USA. Well, thanks for writing in, Keith. I guess there in the past, uh, we have certainly discussed a number of ideas uh, with using arpeggios of all types. But in uh, case of arpeggio alternatives, like uh, using extensions, you know, they can work well to expand the variety of uh, chord-based musical lines. So in this lesson, I'm going to take a pattern of a two octave A minor seven arpeggio and work through it, adding the extended tone of a 9th, 11th, and 13th. This way, we'll get to observe the different extensions on the neck and we'll get to test some examples for each of their melodic alterations. So let's zoom in on the guitar fingerboard and get started. Well, prior to getting involved with extensions on any pattern of arpeggio, it's best to begin with a single arpeggio layout. Uh, you, know, you can pick your chord quality and then from there branch out further into various extensions that you want to apply upon the arpeggio. So my first example here, I'm just going to set a foundational pattern. I'm going to use an A minor 7 arpeggio. I'm going to build it here off 6th string in the 5th position. It's going to cover 2 octaves. Uh, and I'll just play it slowly here for you so you get a really good idea how this thing sounds. All right, so that's going to be our primary shape, the foundational shape that we're going to uh, carry on into all the other extensions. But uh, before we go into each individual extension, I wanted to uh, move uh, into the idea of just adding in all the possible extensions that we would find available within the region of our foundational pattern here. It's really good to uh, zero in on the specific notes, uh, make them well aware to yourself so you know exactly which ones are placed where. And uh, you know this is going to include uh, everything around that A minor 7 an arpeggio I just played and uh, you know it's going to include the 9th, 11th and 13th extensions. So here's the way I've organized those various extensions around that uh, foundational pattern. So we've got the root, the 9th, the minor 3rd, the 11th, the 5th, the 13th, the flat 7, and then the octave, and then the same layout carrying on into the next uh, range. So root, you know, a ninth, and minor third, eleventh, fifth, thirteenth, flat seven, and the octave up there. So that's all of them. And I guess you know, the next thing that we want to do is organize how we can uh, create some guitar lick ideas so that if we do happen to come across a, a ninth chord or an eleventh chord or thirteenth chord, we're going to be able to inject that sound and uh, get something cool to happen around that type of chord quality. So uh, let's move on next to covering some sound of the uh, minor ninth. All right, now that we've established our foundational shape and we've laid out a group of the possible extensions that we could find in the entire scope of the foundational pattern, the next step is to start building some licks that target those specific extensions. Now, my first arpeggio lick example here is going to be targeting the ninth extension on an A minor uh, sounding chord or A minor seven in this case here that I'm playing. Uh, we're going to be adding in a B note. That's the ninth extension there. And that's going to cover that sound of A minor 9 within the chord quality itself. But I also have a, a minor ninth arpeggio lick that I wanted to put over top of that. So I've already uh, punched that um, chord into the loop pedal. So that's going to be playing in the background. And then I'm going to be playing uh, this guitar lick uh, around it. Now in the lick, what we're looking for here are B notes that I've been adding in. So it starts on a B. 
does some arpeggio tones under that A minor 7 arpeggio. Comes up to a B again at the 12th fret 2nd string. And then we go through some more arpeggio tones. And then take the uh, B down into the A note. So we're taking that B at the 9th fret of the 4th string. And we're finally targeting into the root of that uh, A minor sounding chord there. So uh, I'm going to fire up the loop pedal and get that sound of that A minor 9 chord in the background. I'm going to play this lick a few times over top of it. Well, now that we've tried a ninth, let's find out how this might work with another extension as well. In my next example, I'm going to target the 11th extension. That's going to be a D note on that A minor chord, creating A minor 11. Now, keep in mind that there's more to this than just simply creating a lick with the included extended tone. The lick needs to lean into the specific extension at some point where the extension will have the chance to you know, really punch through. This could be at a certain point of the rhythm or maybe by way of an extended length of time so the listener has ample opportunity to hear the sound of that tone, in this case the D, the 11th, really connect with the quality of the underlying harmony. So here's an example lick that I composed that's going to be using the extension of an 11th. I'm going to use that around the sounds of an A minor 11 chord. Now I've already got the chord into the loop pedal, so I'm going to punch the loop pedal in and uh, just play this guitar lick over top of that. Now in my final example, I wanted to cover our last extension, and it's going to be the extension of the 13th. So this kind of melodic idea is going to focus on the addition of adding an F sharp into the mix of tones that make up that A minor 7 arpeggio. Remember when you're building your own extended arpeggio lines also, you know, make sure you target into the proper extension. And uh, in this case, uh, you know, even though we're on a minor chord, uh, that extension when we're adding in, it's actually a major extension. That's going to be, a, in this case, an F sharp. Okay. Now, uh, if you're going to be playing other scale ideas around that, remember that uh, the color of that F sharp is really bringing in more of a Dorian mode sound. So just watch that. Um, and uh, like we were mentioning before, when you're building these uh, extended arpeggio lines, make sure to target into the extension on either a strong beat or by way of giving a, a lengthy sustain across a good segment of one of the measures of your lick. So uh, the guitar lick that I have uh, for this is going to start on the upbeat of one on the first measure. It's uh, more or less a three bar type of, uh, of lick. And it sounds like this. <laughs> Play that one more time. We kind of added an embellishment at the end. Uh, so my improvising uh, state taking over here. I'm going to play it more exactly as it's written. Okay, that's the exact written version. So my own made up improvised version. <laughs> um, but I do have that uh, A minor 13 chord into the loop pedal and uh, I'm gonna fire that up and play this guitar lick over the uh, A minor 13 sound. Here we go.
Well, I guess it goes without saying that if you're going to have any success with playing melodies on guitar of any kind, you'll uh, need to be able to fully understand many different types of fingerboard shapes and patterns. So that's scales, arpeggios, and so forth. If you're going to play arpeggios, though, that include 9th, 11th, and 13th, you know, breaking away uh, into the extensions from all the standard, you know, major 7, minor 7, dominant 7th, minor 7, flat 5, you know, all the standard arpeggios, it's going to take you a lot of extra work to develop several new arpeggio layouts on the neck. You're going to have to develop the, uh, the you know, minor 9, major 9, uh, dominant 9. It's going to be a lot of work. So there is an alternative, and it's to basically produce a selection of your own favorite melodic licks that you can use for the various extensions. And this way, you know, if you want a particular sound or a specific chord, you can produce that sound with just simply one of your, you know, uh, canned guitar licks, you might as well say. You know, instead of going and trying to invent a line of some kind of other alternative arpeggio that you would have had to spend, obviously, you know, hours or weeks or maybe even months uh, developing, you know, for the shape on the neck. But, you know, regardless of whatever you decide to do, if you want to put in all the extra work, that's great. And if you don't, if you want to make the guitar licks direction, you know, the main focus for yourself, uh, whatever you do, extensions are unique. Uh, they produce really cool sounds and, you know, they're a very different kind of sound when you're adding them in. So overall, it's very beneficial work to do for guitar playing. Anyway, that's about all the time I have for today. So as always, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great week and we'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now. My Blues Guitar Styles eBook is a masterclass course covering a huge amount of information with 8, 12, and 16 bar blues progressions, classic blues styles, plus all the important chord patterns. There's over 50 pages of information, including sections on blues techniques like slide, alternate tuning, and bending. This eBook has everything the guitar player needs for a solid foundation in blues guitar, including 27 MP3 audio tracks for easy at-home study. Blues Guitar Styles is available for instant download in the View Our Products area at creativeguitarstudio.com.